This is the secret for you to be blessed, whether in your marriage or in any other area of your life, and it's to obey the voice of God. Because whatever He says is for our own good. He'll never give us a command or order that harms us. So today, you're going to learn why God called women wives and men husbands. Why did God give these names to men and to women? You know that whenever someone creates something, that creator gives it a name. And normally, that name designates the function of the thing that was created. So, for example, most people don't just have a cell phone. What they have is a smartphone, which means it's an intelligent telephone. When the cell phone stopped being just a device to make a voice call, it stopped being a cell phone and turned into a smartphone, or in other words, an intelligent phone. It changed its name to designate its functions. God gave names to the people, to the things that He created, and these names reveal their function. They show the role that they play. When God designated man to be a husband, what was the meaning of the name? What is a husband in biblical terms? The word husband means caregiver, the one who cares. If you husbands, you men, absorb this name for yourself, the meaning of this name for yourself, your vision will totally change about the role you have in your home. Many men get married but know nothing about their role. They think that getting married is for a man and a woman to get together and form a family, etc. Becoming a husband means that you take on the role of caregiver for your wife. Caregiver in every way. You have to care for her. You are responsible for her. If we go back and look at the first couple, we can understand this better. When God created man and woman, He created man first. Sometime later, He created woman. Man was created first and he was created after all the rest of creation, the animals, the trees, all of nature and so on. God created the world and afterwards created man. He came to the man and told him, all of this, all the earth, I am placing under your care. You will take care of the earth. You will be my administrator, my representative. You have to take care of it and cause it to prosper. You have to do your best. You have to multiply all that I am placing into your hands. That's what God told the man. So, man became the caregiver of the earth, the species that would go all out to care for this here. God entrusted all that into the hands of man. When He created the woman, the passage says, The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So He created woman. He caused the man to fall asleep and took a rib from his side and made a woman for him and gave her to him. This woman who God gave to him became the man's primary responsibility. Beforehand, he had to care for the earth, the animals, the gardens and things. 
But his primary responsibility after she was made became her. The man's responsibility was to care for his wife in every sense. Not just to provide for her materially, but to protect her. To see that she was doing well in every way. So that was the role and function that God gave to man as a husband, caregiver. So a man, a husband has to ask, how do I fulfill this role? In my marriage, with my wife, have I cared for her? Have I gone all out for her? Think about the meaning of this word. When we talk about the word to care, we include all of its meanings. To care means that you give kindness because when you care about something, you are kind. Yes or no? Yes or no? If you take care of an animal that you care about, you show kindness to the animal. You give it the food that it likes. You find out what it likes. Caring involves kindness. It involves attention. When you give attention to your wife, it's a form of caring. Because when you care, you have to pay attention. Nobody cares for someone without giving them attention. It's impossible for you to care about something and not give it any attention. So you have to give her attention. It's your role. It's your function. It's not a question of whether you like it. Whether you like it or not is another story. Normally, men don't like to listen, to have to keep listening to their wives. Normally, generally speaking, there are some couples where the man speaks more than the woman. But normally, the woman is the one who likes to speak more, to converse, to talk about the problems and whatever she's thinking about. Whatever is on her mind, she talks about. A man won't see even the slightest sense in doing this. A man thinks, I'm only going to talk if it helps someone, if it's to resolve some problem, if it'll prove something. If it's not going to help, why should I even bother talking? So he's just used to staying quiet. So a woman's voice in a man's ear can many times seem unnecessary. Why are you saying this? This isn't going to fix anything. I've already heard this a thousand times. And so he normally gets saturated with hearing the voice of his wife. But that's his role. That's your function. We aren't supposed to do what we like. So we have to think, no, my part as a husband is to care. And to care means I have to give her my attention. To care means giving her attention. So to care means making her feel secure. If you are responsible for her, you have to make her feel secure. Secure in what sense? How can she feel cared for if I, for example, can't even care for myself? If I've become an addict, out of control with money, addicted, if I lie, if I can't make her feel secure, that I can even take care of myself. How can I take care of her? This is why many women end up having to step ahead of their husbands. They end up having to say, you know what, I can't keep wasting my time on you anymore. They have to take the lead. Why? Because their husbands don't give them that security. He's irresponsible. He isn't a caregiver. He isn't a protector. And he isn't, above all, a provider. He doesn't fulfill his role. So she sees that She's unprotected, uncared for, so she thinks. I gotta do what I can, it's all up to me, so I better go ahead and take care of my life. And he starts to feel resentful. And he says, you don't listen to me, you don't respect me, you don't wait for me, you don't consult me about anything. Yeah, but you haven't been fulfilling your role as a caregiver, and that's why you've got problems. So, man was designated as a caregiver for his wife. You are responsible for her, just as Jesus is responsible for the church. What did Jesus do for the church? He gave his life. You are responsible to care for your wife with your own life. Now for women, what is her function? As we read here, the Lord God said, I will make a helper suitable for him. Look at her function. 
Look at the name that God gave to the woman. Suitable helper. So, what is a suitable helper? Suitable helper means she matches well. Suitable means that is just what he that needs. That she's well suited. She is a perfect fit for his needs as a man. And going back just a little to the question of the man, because now we understand why women, even though they are so independent, even though they don't seem to need anybody these days, women have careers, they have their own money, they have everything. Women today generally don't, mean, don't need a man. Generally speaking, when you look at them, they don't need a man. They don't need men to provide anything for them. But even so, women want to marry. Hmm. Why? Why do women want to marry? Why do they want a husband? Because if all they wanted was just to have a man, they wouldn't need marriage for that either. So when we understand why a man needs to be a husband and why a woman needs to be a wife, we can understand better why we need these behaviors. Even in a society that doesn't even consider that one depends on the other, you still want each other. You still look, want to be cared for. Women want to be cared for. They, they don't need to be cared for, but they want it. Why? Why does she want to be rescued? Why does she want to be protected? Because deep inside, that's why she wanted to get married. To think, you know, I have a husband. I belong to my husband. I have a husband who cares for me, who thinks about me, who is protecting me. Even though I don't need him, I don't need his money, his house, nothing. But even so, my nature as a woman, it's how I was created. For him, I need him. This is my origin. In the depths of my being, in my feminine essence, she wants to have a husband. Men can live as bachelors, live their lives the way that they want. They don't need a woman. They don't need a wife. So why do so many want a wife? It's also because of his nature, his essence. From back in the Garden of Eden, from his creation, I need a helper. I need someone, a woman to look after me, to care for me. So a woman has to understand her role. Renato explained about a man's role. A woman has to understand her role because we live in a time that tells us, no, you have to think about yourself. Women, right? Not the men. No one says this to men, but they do to women. You have to think about yourself, think about your life, your future, your money, your career, your dreams. So she marries, and deep inside, she does want to have a caregiver, but often her own behavior as a wife doesn't express what it is that she wants. So she wants a caregiver, but that means she has to allow him to care for her. She can't be the kind of woman that the world says that she's supposed to be and also be a wife at the same time. It doesn't work. He can't be a husband. She doesn't let him care for her. She doesn't listen to anything he says. She does what she wants with her money. She uses her money the way she wants. And she makes her own decisions. She travels without him because he doesn't want to go. So yeah, I'll go by myself. It means that if you act like this, you'll lose what you want, which is a caregiver. He'll think, why should I stay in this marriage? What's my function here? I'm just some guy in this house. I don't feel needed. I don't feel. She doesn't need me. And the same goes for the husband. He'll look at his wife and say, what do I need a wife for? What difference does she make from any other woman who could be in her place. She has to become his helper. She has to be unique, right? The only woman in this world that can tell him, I will serve you. I will help you. We'll grow together and I'll help you do this. What can I 
do to help you. So this is what I think, me and Renato. I always think this way. What can I do to help Renato with what he does? When he gets home and is upset about something, I think, what could I do to help? Don't talk, so I'm not going to talk. I stay quiet. <laughs> I don't keep asking him, talk to me, tell me, how are you doing? Now I think, my God, I pray for him and I stay quiet. Because I know that at that moment, what he needs is silence. And so as a helper, a helper isn't just someone who goes out and earns money for the household. That's not what it is. That's the bare minimum. You see, what he needs, every husband needs something. Sometimes your husband wants to talk. Other times, your husband, for example, eats badly. He has health problems. He eats poorly. He eats fast food. How could you as a helper help him with this? Okay, I'm going to help him with his eating. I'm going to fix food for him. I'm going to make his lunch to take to work. Or I see that he's overloaded with work and he can't help me out at home. He gets home and he's dying of exhaustion. He works so much all day long. So I'm not going to ask him to wash the dishes because he's so tired. I can wash the, the dishes myself. And if I can't wash the dishes, then no one will, and they'll just stay in the sink. But what do many women do? You're right here, but I'm the only one that has to wash the dishes in this house. I'm the one who has to take care of the kids. I'm the one who's devoted to the kids. You have to do it too. What I mean is that they forget that they have their role. We have a role to fulfill. And if we think that both of us have the same role, forget about being a husband and wife. You're just a man and a woman in a house. And this is what the world is telling you, woman. No, whatever you do, he has to do it too. What you have, he has to have. But it doesn't work that way. We are very different from each other. When you are helping your husband, you are helping yourself. From a biblical point of view, both are just one flesh. You are one body. So when my legs are walking, they are complaining about my hands and my arms. Imagine if my feet were complaining. You hands got it so easy. I like to see you down here with me. I like to see you walking like me, carrying this load like me. We'll be walking on all fours. Imagine what that would be like. The body complaining, the different parts of the body complaining with each other because the others don't like what they are doing. It wouldn't make any sense at all. Just like it makes no sense for you to argue with each other, you want to split everything 50-50. Imagine, let's get a ruler and divide our tasks by 50%. This isn't even practical. Not even practical. It's only result of one thing. Arguments. That's it. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work because, for example, men are more rational than women. So whenever we have a problem, he knows how to deal with it much better than me. I'll get upset right away. I'll get stressed out. But a man doesn't. He's able to control himself because he's living out his role. The role of caring for me. Leave it to me. You can leave it to me. I'll take care of this. I'll resolve this. And a woman feels, okay then. He'll take care of me. He won't let anything go undone. Right? If a lion's right in front of you, he's the one who has to deal with the lion. If he grabs his wife and puts her in front of him and says, go get him. No, both have to go together, right? So this is a time when a woman doesn't want to split the task. The moment when a thief is banging on the door. The time when you have to move the sofa or pick up something that's heavy. She never says, we got to split the tasks. So let's go get that thief. So you have to accept and learn to accept your function. Your function doesn't mean your importance, being greater or less than the other. Just because I have the function of caregiver doesn't mean I'm better than her. And neither is she less than me since she's my suitable helper. These are complementary functions, just like any team, any business that's successful. Each person has their place to do their best, and everyone wins. 
Do you understand? So embrace this idea. What does it mean to be a husband? What is a husband? A caregiver. What is a wife? A woman? A suitable helper. A helper who is useful. Not in the way that you want, but in the way that's suitable for him. Which means she's useful according to what he needs. All right? Did you know that over 50% of couples who get divorced regret not trying harder to save their marriage? No one gets married to later get a divorce. But sometimes it seems like there's no other option. Wait, you haven't tried everything. Bulletproof Marriage has already helped millions of couples all around the world to avoid separation. Even if one party isn't willing to change or the relationship seems like a lost cause, give yourself this opportunity. Read this amazing book and shield your marriage against divorce. Buy the book on Amazon.com today. Have you ever heard that most of our interpersonal communication is nonverbal? So if you say that you can't wait to see someone, while your body language communicates that you really wish you had an excuse not to, without realizing it, your body is speaking much louder than your words. Have you ever been upset with someone you love, not because of what they said, but because of how they said it? Just like body language, our tone of voice can communicate volumes and cause a great deal of misunderstanding in a relationship. Healthy communication skills are the foundation of any relationship, and especially in marriage. But research has documented how differently men and women communicate and interpret information. Do you know how your spouse sees you? Are you sure you know how to communicate with them? Are you saying the right words, but sending all the wrong messages with your body language and tones of voice? Come to our Therapy of Love meeting for practical teaching on healthy communication in marriage. The Therapy of Love is a meeting for both married and single people who want to get smart about love and allow God to heal and rebuild their love lives. To learn with David and Evelyn Higginbotham in person, come to the Houston Universal Church at 7075 Southwest Freeway between Bel Air and Hillcroft every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Also at every Universal Church location. Imagine waking up one day to find that you married the wrong person or that you lost your true love because you ruined your relationship or that you'd missed it when that special person came into your life. For those who don't want to spend the rest of their lives regretting a bad decision, Bulletproof Dating is a must read, no matter what stage of singleness you're in. Whether you're alone, waiting, dating, picking up the pieces of your broken heart, divorced or widowed. This book will help you navigate the complicated world of modern relationships. Years of experience have given Renato and Cristiani Cardoso authority to say that most divorces start during the dating phase. Bulletproof Dating is a manual for all ages and will open your eyes and show you practical actions you can take. It's time to learn intelligent love. Ebook available on Amazon.com and other online retailers.